I wish to thank you for participating in the baptismal preparation program here at St. Michael Catholic Church. My name is Monsignor Frank Rossi. I'm privileged to be the pastor. You parents who are presenting your children for baptism here at St. Michael's, I thank you very much. Um, our parish family is enriched by having your children as part of the membership of this community upon their baptism. In the Catholic tradition, the rite of baptism is very rich and highly symbolic. And so I think if we take a moment to look at how we celebrate the sacrament of baptism, we'll be able to enter more deeply into the celebration itself. In the Catholic tradition, the sacrament of baptism has a twofold purpose. From one perspective, it is a welcoming into the Christian family, the person who is going to be baptized. And then secondly, it's the infusion of the grace of the Holy Spirit of Jesus, which animates then the life of those who are baptized. So the way we celebrate the sacrament is this. In the beginning, parents and godparents will stand before the community, and the minister will ask, what name have you given your child? This is very important. We go back to sacred scripture, the Old Testament, and into the New. That capacity to name something means that you have an authority and a responsibility. Go back to the Garden of Eden, and that there God says to the first couple, name all of the plants and animals. And whatever name you give it shall be its name. And they do that. And God afterwards says, now, have dominion over all creation. In other words, take care of what you have named. Throughout the scriptures, we see that God often changes someone's name when he gives them a special mission, like Abram becomes Abraham, Simon becomes Peter, Saul becomes Paul, and that we see here every time they are given a name, they're given a spiritual identity. So parents, you have the privilege of naming your children, and in doing so, you are giving them a very special identity it's a name that they will carry with them for the rest of their lives, but also an identity as being part of your family, and then in baptism, part of the family of the faith. And so after you have told the minister the name you've given your child, the minister will ask, what do you want of the church for your child? And you will state that you want them to be baptized. And then the minister will ask if you are willing to accept the responsibilities of training your child in the practice of the faith because you parents, uh, you are the first educators of your children in all ways, in, including the ways of faith. Your children will first learn about God, not from being inside the church, but being inside your homes. For there you will teach your children their first prayers. It is there that they will learn to know of God's love for them. And so after you have committed yourselves to raising your children in the practice of the faith, we then turn to the sponsors, the godparents. You will be asked, are you willing to assist the parents in their duty as Christian parents? Godparents, please remember that you are not present at the ceremony representing the family, but rather representing the Catholic Church. You are a visible presence that the Catholic Church wants to be a part of this child's life, wants to assist the parents in their duty as Christian parents. And so you are speaking on behalf of 1.3 billion Catholics that we want to assist the parents and the child himself in learning more about God, teachings of our Catholic Church, how to live in faith and morals. Once we have made those commitments from the parents and the godparents, then the minister will sign each child with the sign of the cross, which is the symbol of our Christian faith. The sign of the cross will be traced on the forehead of the child. And then parents and godparents, and hopefully all of those who have joined you will be able to do the same. So that's our welcoming. And then after we've done that, we're going to listen to a passage of sacred scripture because the sacraments are not the creation of the church. They're the gift of the Lord. And so we want to take a moment to listen to what our Lord has to say about the Christian faith, about being baptized, and what that gift is for us. 
after the scripture passage, we're going to have some intercessory prayers. And that's where we ask the Lord to assist us to be able, as adults, to be good witnesses of the faith for our children. Because our children will learn about our faith through our words and our actions. And so we'll ask God to help us to be good witnesses of the faith for the children who are entrusted to our care. And after we do that, we're going to ask the saints to intercede for us. These are the men and women of heroic virtue who were human just like us, but lived their Christian faith to the full. And so we'll ask them to intercede for us and to assist us by their prayers that we may be living saints for our children. After we have done that, we will have a special preparatory prayer over the children, claiming that we do desire that the Lord will free them from sin and fill them with His grace. And, and so we'll move to the baptismal font. Once there, we will ask God's blessings to be upon the water. And I invite you to listen attentively to the prayer of blessing because it shows how God has used water throughout salvation history as a symbol of His presence and His power in our world and in our lives. Once our water has been blessed, now, now we need to be enriched. And so we will all be asked to renew our baptismal promises to, to reject sin and to profess our faith in God. We say, I do, that we will renounce sin. And then we will say, I do, that we do believe in God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So now our water is blessed and we are fortified in our faith. And then one by one, the children will be brought to the font, held by parents, godparents. We will pour the waters of baptism over the head of the child while we invoke the triune God. And through that water and word, each child will be cleansed of the stain of original sin that we all bear by virtue of coming from a fallen human race, and then the infusion of the grace of the Holy Spirit of Christ that will dwell forever in the life of the child. Once they come out of the waters of baptism, each will be anointed with chrism oil. The chrism oil is an oil that is consecrated by the bishop each year. Chrism oil has balsam in it, a perfume, so it's very sweet smelling. St. Augustine tells us that the sweetness of the oil is to remind us of the sweetness of God's love that comes to us in the sacraments. In Old Testament times, priests, prophets, and kings were anointed with oil to show their royalty and dignity, and, and so we place the oil of chrism on the foreheads of each person after their baptism. The chrism oil is used in three sacraments of the church, each of which gives a character, meaning a grace that can never be lost, baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. Once they have received the oil of chrism, we will place a white garment over them. White is the symbol of dignity and purity. And so we ask to place the garment over their head. And this white will be an outward sign and symbol of the interior dignity and purity they have by being baptized in Christ. After that, each family will have a lit candle that will be placed next to the child. The flame has been a symbol of the presence of God. In every Catholic church, wherever you see the tabernacle, very close by will be a lit candle. That flame symbolizing the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And so off of our Easter candle, we light the candles and place them next to the children, symbolizing that the light of Christ will always be with them, guiding them in the ways of goodness and holiness. Once they have received these symbols of their baptism, then as a community of faith, we will pray together the Lord's Prayer. And then after that, we will have a special prayer of blessing upon the mother and then upon the Father, and then upon us all, so that God will bless us to be good witnesses of the Christian faith to, to our children. And that will then conclude our 
celebration of the rite of baptism, where we have joyfully welcomed into our Christian family these beautiful new members, and they have received that beautiful gift of the Spirit of Christ, guiding them in this journey here on earth and ultimately leading them to the gift of eternal life.